an Instagram buddy sent me this wrench. It was filthy, rusty, and stuck. Just how I like them. I gave it a bath in mineral spirits. Then I went after the worst of the rust with a wire wheel. Here's the wrench after the wire wheel. It was still stuck. I soaked it in Evaporust for 24 hours. It removed more of the rust, but it was still stuck. So I gave it some wax with a hammer. Check out the liquid patina oozing around the knurl. I got it to move. I noticed that the pin was slotted, but it turned with the knurl. But what appeared to be the opposite end of the pin did not turn with the knurl. I also noticed that there was a lot of play at that end. I suspected that the pin was broken. First I tried to hold the knurl in the vise and turn the pin. It wouldn't budge. I ended up bending the screwdriver tip. Next I tried heating the knurl with my propane torch. This didn't work either. As a last resort, I decided to drill out the pin. It fought me the whole way out. Here's the wrench finally apart. You can see the side I drilled out. The other end of the pin was broken off. Some of it was still in the wrench. I carefully drilled the rest of the pin out of the knurl. I also drilled out the section of the pin left in the wrench. I got all the parts reassembled and working smoothly. Now I had to make a pin. Ah! No Chuck, we don't have a metal lathe. I drilled out one side of the wrench with the tap drill for quarter twenty. I used a center drill to create a countersink so it would be easier to get the tap started. Then I used my quarter twenty tap. I made the pin out of all thread in my drill press. I did the rough machining with an angle grinder. Then I snuck up on the right diameter with a file. I was able to get a pretty good fit.
worked like a champ. I cut my pin to length and added a screwdriver slot. Who needs a lathe? Now that I had the wrench working properly, I decided to see if I could improve its appearance. I started out with a 120 grit belt. I sanded the flat surfaces of the jaws against the platen. And I worked above the platen on the rounded contours of the handle. I used a drum sander in my drill for a couple of spots I couldn't reach with the belt sander. The knurl was a mess. I did the best I could on it with a small file. So here's the wrench sanded down to 400 grit. I hand sanded the two inside curves and the butt. I used ultra fine Scotch Brite discs in my Dremel to smooth out the sanding lines. I thought the Scotch Brite gave the wrench a nice matte finish. I wasn't going to go nuts and flitz this old beat up. Geez, you don't have to yell. So I broke out the flits, just so Chuck would calm down. Here's the wrench, just as it came to me in the mail. I figured since I had to flitz it, I might as well add some paint. I used Tester's flat gray enamel and flat black for the lettering. Bemis and Call dates back to 1844. They are best known for their combination pipe and nut wrench and their adjustable S wrench. This was a fun project. Getting the wrench apart ended up being quite a challenge. I thought my no lathe pin came out pretty good. I'm glad Chuck insisted on me flitzing it because that led me to painting it and I think the black letters over the gray look sharp. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. These are the three polishing wheels I use in my Dremel. I got them all from Amazon. This wool wheel is the most aggressive. It's pretty easy to overheat the flits with this one. It does work well with the black emery compound. These puffy cotton ball wheels work well with the flits. I also use these when polishing plastic with the white compound. I just started using these multiply wheels. They throw a lot of loose threads at first, but then they settle in. 
I used one of these on this project. I like the way it performs with my flits.